fishing fam. So today, on Tackle Tuesday, we're going back into the top water box. We're gonna be checking out some poppers and popping frogs today. Let me just open this up. I talked about some of them last time in my other Tackle Tuesday episode in the top water box actual episode. But we're gonna be doing the regular poppers and popping frogs. So there we go. So I have five presentations for you guys to see. Um, so let's get let's get right into it. So first, we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about these poppers. So poppers have been around for a while, and they catch largemouth bass as well as smallmouth bass and other species of fish very well in the uh, summer and fall um, seasons. And that's because they create a nice presentation on top of the water as well as creating a nice sound underneath the water. So first of all, I have this popper right here. It has some nice big trebles on there. You want sharp hooks for your topwater baits because sometimes the fish will come up right behind it and they'll only get one hook. And if that hook is dull, then you won't hook those fish. So, that's the first thing. And when the fish jump up, as I said, if they only get one hook and it's nice and sharp, they're gonna get hooked if you set the hook. So that's the first one. It has a white belly. So I would use this when it's a little bit darker outside, not nighttime. It's a little bit darker outside. Somebody commented on my last video when to use black frogs. So I'll, I'll talk about that with this dark brown frog in a few moments. Um, but with popping frogs as well as poppers, I would use braid. I mean, you could tie it to a monofilament leader if you really wanted to for those finicky top water bass I mean I've never come across any of those but there might there might be some you could tie like a six inch leader onto there uh, or if you're fishing for uh, around pike and stuff but you're actually fishing for bass just like in the andro when I'm trying to fish for bass I come across pike a lot I could tie a 20 pound monofilament leader six inch leader and those pike would be able to grab on and not take that top water bait so white bottom is for the darker hours not nighttime though like dusk right when it's about to turn nighttime right before the sun goes down but there we go like how it has this nice big mouth on it it'll create a nice loud pop in the water and also the design on the side isn't too 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 bad it has some nice gills on there that's a bait fish presentation so next one is the BPS popper I believe it's called the BPS popper one dollar lure best popper for smallmouth as said by John B but this actually works very well I would agree with John B with that because it is the best uh, low priced popper for smallmouth bass this has worked everywhere for me in the river uh, in the stream that I go to and you guys will see them the, that in the summer. I know I keep mentioning it and but There we go nice big sharp trebles on there I have not changed those out from when I bought them. They haven't bent out at all From all the fish that I've caught on them. This one has a little bit of a smaller mouth But it's a lot deeper as you can see here. This one has the mouth on it but it's not as deep and the eyelet comes out a little bit more that'll create a big splash on top of the water um but not as much noise underneath the water and with this with the big cup super far uh, super deep into the bait it'll actually pop and make a bigger sound under the water than it will on top of the water so you can get a lot more fish from farther away with this lure i also like the nice eyes on it creates a nice presentation um, I believe this is supposed to be like a frog frog pattern or you could call it a bait fish because it has the gills on there. But all in all, that's a nice popper. Uh, with poppers, you can fish it through 
like rock ledges, shallower rock ledges. You don't want to be fishing it in 20 foot of water if the fish are all the way at the bottom. That's just, you're not going to get bit. And so this is my last popper right here. This one, as you can see, has a different type of treble hook on the back. We'll get to talking about that in a few minutes. So I like how it has these big eyes on it. It could create a presentation for a bait fish uh, or shiners. Because if you haven't seen a shiner before, they have pretty big eyes. But I believe this is supposed to be either a bait fish or a type of frog. As you can see, it has the same pattern on, this, on the back as the BPS popper. And it has like this really, really bright presentation for bass and I believe this will be really good for pike because pike go after like the craziest looking things um, but I like the big eyes on it I like how designed it is on the back and also it has an orange belly instead of this so see how this popper is a lot bigger and a lot thicker than this one so if you have this popper right here and you miss a smallmouth on this um, or any type of bass on this, you could cast this out, kind of the same presentation, as a little bit shallower of a cup on it, but it's also a little bit smaller, and it has this nice feathery presentation on the bottom. You might be able to get that fish to jump up again and hit it, if it missed that. And with this feather, shiny feather stuff on the back right here, that also creates a nice presentation. That kind of looks like a bait fish tail. Nice shiny bait fish tail for those bass to come after. But there we go. That's a nice popper right there. So I would fish these, as I said, around rock ledges, probably like 10 feet or 10 feet or shallower. And now we're gonna go into these popping frogs. So popping frogs, I really like to use. Um, Sometimes I would use them in open water, but not usually. I'd just use these poppers in open water um, because you can actually use these soft-bellied or soft-bodied frogs, popping frogs, in weeds. So you can pop this thing right through weeds, and you can walk the dog right through all those weeds, and it will attract a lot more fish, especially since these treble hooks are all open. If you cast this into the weeds, most likely, you're not getting the lure back. So with this white belly one, this one might be a little bit towards the open water side, uh, right along the edges of weeds. I might burn it through weeds and stuff like that because it has a nice bait fish color on the side. And that's going to look really nice to the bass. And it has this soft, soft cup on it with the nice eyelet right there. But the soft cup... Uh, kind of allows it to morph to how hard you're popping it. So if you pop it really hard, since it's nice and soft, it'll, the cup will kind of go a little bit deeper and you'll get a nice pop out of it. And if you're popping it pretty soft, it'll still get that nice splash out of it. That's what I like about this lure. It also has these blue and purple, I would say, legs. Blue and purple legs. Blue, black, and purple legs. And that kind of just stands out from the body. And I cut the legs to the size of the body because that'll just get the bass to hone in on your frog instead of the legs. So this, the darker frog. Um, somebody asked me about this in the last video. This does not have hooks, by the way, so I need to buy a hook for this. But uh, the darker frogs I would use uh, during the daylight hours if it's blue skies white clouds in the sky, I don't care, black frog all the way, or darker belly frog all the way, because with that darker frog, you can be um, 10 feet down, the fish could be all the way at the bottom, you could be burning that thing, or you could just be popping it along very slowly, and the fish look up, even on a white cloudy day, and they can see that bait a lot better if you had like a white bellied one like this. Because if you're a fish and you're looking up at a frog, even if it's moving, even if it's moving, okay, and you just look up and there's clouds above this frog, you're not going to be able to see it too, too well. You'll be able to see the movement on top of the water, 
but if that fish does come up, it's most likely either going to miss it completely, or maybe take, like, the legs or something. But using these darker frogs, you can use these at nighttime, because with the moon, if you're pumping along, and the moon's pretty much a perspective anywhere that you are, like, on the water, usually you can see the moon from some place, and those bass can see this frog, like, just... Just cruising along on top of the water with the moonlight. And if you use a white frog, that would work too at nighttime. Um, I just like the darker frogs because it kind of makes it a little bit more natural colored. Because if you're using a white frog at nighttime, it just doesn't, doesn't look as natural to those fish. And I would also use this in the morning. Uh, the darker morning, like just after dawn. But there you go. There's poppin' frogs and poppers for this Tackle Tuesday episode. Uh, Colton Murdoch, I have not sent the fishing bag yet. I have to get on that. Uh, I've been so busy. I'm still sick. And I need to stop making excuses. I just got to get to the post office and send that thing. Uh, sorry about that. I'll, I, I have to send it as soon as I can. But anyways, hopefully I'll be able to go smelting sometime soon or ice fishing with Ricky. Uh, if you don't know him, he's one of my friends. Um, you can check previous videos. He's a pretty cool, pretty cool dude. But thanks for watching this episode. Sorry it's a 12-minute video, but, you know, I had to cover everything. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next episode.